What is up everybody, Golden Yogi here, and you are tuning into the channel with the Golden Perspective. Today I wanna to take you on a little ride through a throwback of uh, well, sort of a combination of a few things, but it mostly resembles something that was uh, I was involved with on IOST in, well, I wanna say the, the end of 2019 into 2020. Yeah, it was definitely into 2020. It, the summer of 2020, I think, is when I got out. So it might have just been 2020. All right, my memory serves me correct. Anyhow, it was called Power Mine. And uh, I'm going to walk you through the, uh, the white paper here, or the light paper. So this is called Hyper Mine. So it was similar to Power Mine in its name. And uh, these, this team went on to eventually uh, create Growth DeFi on uh, a few different chains. I think uh, Phantom, Avalanche, and Binance Smart Chain. It's still going on. And, uh, but it was done in a different manner. And so this is the H-Mine, the H-Mine token for Hypermine. And uh, there will be a maximum supply of 200,000. On Powermine, it was 20,000, okay? But I believe they want to learn from what they did last time and just make it more expandable. So there were two pre-launch sacrifice, found, sacrifice rounds, so things have already gotten started and I think it's on to round nine right now, maybe round 10, we'll check in just a minute. And then there's gonna be 100 post-launch standard rounds, but each one will have 100, 1,000 H-mine per round, where the pre-launch was 50,000 per round, okay? And this is an absolute fair launch, so there were no allocations for the team or whatnot. I do believe though the team pretty much got into these, you know, heavily into these first two uh, rounds, because I believe they sold out in less than 60 seconds, each one of them. And they were placed about maybe a week apart from each other. Maybe it was like three to five days, but they weren't immediate. So uh, in the sacrifice rounds, uh, it happened prior to the main launch and it provided early stage investors with the best opportunity to get at the lowest uh, price intervals. And it also seeded capital for the treasury bank role uh, and able to, enabled to launch and the basis for investors to pursue returns post launch, okay? And you can feel free, this is all at the uh, hypermind.io website. Um, I believe, yeah, or hypermind.club, okay? You can see that at the top. So the two sacrifice rounds were at $6 and then $6.50. And again, those all sold out. And then it started at $7 for the first thousand tokens. Then it went up $3 to $10 and then up to $13 and then up to 16 and then 19. And then uh, let's see from 19, 22 and then 25 and then 27. And that might be where we're currently at. We'll take a look before. But here's how when uh, the allocations go. So 2.5 goes to the growth DeFi safe token holders, okay? So it does, for people who've been inside these ecosystems, it does have some rewarding to anyone who's still holding the safe token. 7.5% goes to the core management team. And then this is on the new purchases, okay? And then 10% uh, goes to HMine staker, stakers as dividends. Now, 70 for, said, sorry, 70 percent of them go instantly as dividends. The other 30 percent goes into a div pool, a dividend pool, which 25 percent of that pool is paid out daily to HMine stakers. Now, why would you do this? This incentivize people to continue staking longer, okay? Because that div pool will grow over time. Once again, you can see here, it's the same uh, kind of token distribution as I just talked about. Here is the core management team. There's a few guys who were not here the first time around. Uh, I think Miko and Lofgroove, but I remember Ghost, um, he was from Powermine. Well, I guess Miko was with Powermine. It says all of them were, but I don't remember Miko and Lofgroove as being uh, like core position holders so in the operations there's the treasury bank role 
So the core objective of Hypermine is to build and then grow a treasury bankroll, which will consist of assets held and managed by Hypermine and will be pursued in two primary ways. The sale of HMine tokens, which can be purchased with DAI, which is going on right now, and then generating returns on investments by the treasury bankroll. The treasury bankroll initial funding the main objective of the Hypermind distribution phase is to fund the treasury bankroll. The core management team will have the responsibility to determine how the treasury bankroll is used over time and to try and create returns for the HMind holders. Capital raised will be held within the multi-sig wallet managed by the core management team. An initial indication of the treasury bankroll asset allocation structure is 60% will be held in stablecoins, DAI, more USDC, held in LP pairs or single asset staking and tokenized commodities such as gold, Pax G, silver oil, including perpetual futures, etc. The other 40% will held, be held under active management and focused on higher risk, higher potential return plays, which include more volatile crypto assets. Like for instance, they recently uh, have been getting into the avarice, uh, avarice if, however you desk, uh, uh, call it, and it will be uh, those divs from that will go back into uh, collecting grow the the treasury and we'll go over the rest of these okay these things here in a minute on the actual website but there will be something called loans will be available as an option to those who want to take out a fixed loan on their h mine at a 60 percent ltv ratio Loan periods will be fixed at 30 days and will have a 10% monthly interest rate of 120% uh, interest rate applied, which is 20% annually. So a 10% monthly interest rate. Then there's the rich list, which we'll look at too. And this is going to have some interesting things. They have some really big uh, things. I think the top is when everything is done whoever has the highest amount of h mine tokens is going to get a uh like a pimped out what is it it's a porsche it's like the electric porsche i believe it's pretty sick go follow inside the uh, telegram chat to find out more about that so in conclusion um back to the roots of power mine and improve on what worked before because it did really really it worked really well um, I mean, everybody who stayed in there to when everything sold out, I want to say had at least like a 10x, okay? And there was plenty of liquidity out there for people to get in and out. And then they took that and they, uh, they pivoted into the growth DeFi. Here's all the addresses, you know, it's, you know their disclaimers or whatever so i'm not affiliated with them at all uh i'm just really think this is interesting and since i used it before and i've been getting into it a bit myself and let's go take a look at the next page over here is the website and you can click around there's the exchange stats the daily detonator and the light paper which we were just looked at this is the exchange again you would have to approve your tokens and uh as it is right now it's currently in round nine so it's 31 dollars uh so maybe i counted it off let's see 10 13 16 19 22 25 oh we'd go 28 and then 31 that's what it was okay so this is where you would buy and then as soon as you buy them they automatically stake for you so you don't need to go through another uh because pretty much you want to hold on to these because even though you can sell these right now, you're selling them at a big loss. You can't, it's not an AMM, um, but you basically can sell them back at 60% price, okay? So it really is, the, the, the game here is to, to, to hold on and collect uh, dividends through the staking. Now, the stats page, as we see, you can see the total stake, you can see the total value locked. There's the max supply, the circulating supply. And now there's also a bunch of um, them get burned. And I forget what the burn mechanism is here. Uh, so there's the stats. And something that's really fun if you wanna get into this 
is every day there's a contest. Now, the way it works right now, there's three pieces to, to win. Every day there's two daily contests. Now, whoever, by the time that timer runs out, whoever has the highest amount gets sent 250 die. So that's $250. And then of those who had a thousand uh, die or more deposit, let's see, like yesterday, there were only two people. So those top two won. Okay. So the top one was the highest amount. So they immediately just by default, by that being the highest one, the second one won because uh, there's a randomization of those who were not that top one. Unless the top one is the only one, I think that's the only way that they will win both. But then you look at like two days ago, there were four that were in the, were in the top and uh, one of those bottom three, uh, or the second, third, and fourth, one of those three won the $250, $250 die daily prize. Now, the next one is... I forget which day it started. I want to say maybe it was three days ago, but you can follow that in the Telegram chat and ask, is for seven days running, so each week, whoever had the largest amount of die deposited will receive 777 die as a bonus, okay? So that's a, this is a really cool way of getting in uh, a little bit by little bit and increasing uh, your chances for lowering your buy-in price, essentially. And then what else do we have here? That's pretty much it. You know, you got this exchange on the front page. I mean, it's really simple. There's not a whole lot to this is and when once you're staking the rewards will come in right here and you can just compound them or claim them okay uh people have been seeing around like uh like a half to one percent back per day on on what they've been uh uh compounded i believe i, I could be wrong but you know you want to double check with people in the chat and it it's it's not linear so, and it's not anything promised, but it's just what people have been getting, what I've been hearing in the chat. Uh, and perhaps some of those people are ones because they got in there in their early amount. But, uh, and I did think at first, I was like, oh, you know what? This is, uh, I might be too late on this. But because of that daily detonator and the fact that if you, if you as I showed, not too many people are getting in with over a thousand that that one seems to be a pretty good option, actually. Uh, so I'm really interested. Let me know what you think. And yeah, I, I'm really interested. Let me know what you think down below in the comment section. This is a throwback to uh, some old mechanisms that have really worked. I would still call this DeFi, uh, even though it has some, you know, a level of management within uh, how the funds and the treasury are done, but it still is done through uh, multi-sig. So these guys, you know, they've shown through multiple projects that they can handle the fortitude of holding funds for a community. And again, it's not all held in a single person's address. They can't just make a decision and run off. It's these, uh, these uh, core group of people all together hold the multi-sig. So find it to be a pretty good project and also also too one of the big things i forgot to even mention here is almost all of this is in preparation uh even though it's done on binance smart chain right now it's all in preparation to go over to pulse chain and it's super easy the way they have it set up because of it's not uh like a liquidity pool or whatever that they can migrate everything over to pulse chain at this at the point when it's ready and with the high speculation that there's gonna be a lot of activity and a lot of users that are already in, inside the uh, Pulse Chain, um, you know, just excitement, waiting for this to happen. All these hexagons and, you know, big fans of Richard Hart and whatnot. So I find this to be intriguing enough to start uh, dollar cost averaging into it all. 
So again, let me know what you think. I think it's brilliant, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.